that what, anything that you've done up to this point can always be undone. If there's something that you want to be different, then what you do is you can change yourself and be different. And hopefully that means that we also accept people who change and become different. When they, when they shed their skin for good, we should say. But you have to decide to do that, and that's a hard thing to do because of that, that goddamn thing that gets in the way every single time. Pride. Pride. Because for me to change, I have to accept that I'm not what I want to be, and I'm not what I could be. And also, I have to believe that I could become something better than what I am. And that I have a tool set to be able to do that. So not even just that I could, but that I have the skill set to do it at the moment. And that's hard for a lot of us to accept, because that's a lot of moving parts. It's easier for us to just kind of say, love me for who I am. Well, I can love you for what you are, but who you are is something different. I can love you for what you are. You're a human being who's unique, and I mean that, unique and special, just in and of the fact that you exist. But who you are, you do some stuff, man. I do some stuff, man. We all do some stuff, man. Some of it's worse than others. That's true. But just because someone's worse doesn't mean that so suddenly we're good. And by the way, just because someone's better doesn't mean that we're not good also. How the media tries to hide certain stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And it was just probably what I thought, like, it says like the media is free, but is it really free? So here's the scary question, and I, and, I, and I actually mean this in the sense that it is absolutely terrifying to someone like me. When you say that the media is hiding, who are the media in that case who are hiding things? Uh, I imagine like some companies in the government. Actually. That's what's terrifying. It's not even the government. It's Google. A company, right? Yeah, a private company. So in other words, you can write a whole treatise. You, you have a website, and you can write a whole treatise on how the moon landing never happened. Let's just say you believe that it never happened. And you can present all kinds of evidence, sourced, everything. And Google will never put it on their search results, which means nobody will ever see it. Google has the, has the power to do that. And if nobody ever sees it, what happens is, People come to believe that nobody actually believes that point of view. So, for example, um, it wasn't, the, it was last year, actually. Remember earlier in the school year, we looked at those articles on do ghosts exist? And we kind of had the consensus that that was trash, the articles were trash. This thing that sucks is those are some of the best I could find. In other words, if you go on Google and you type in something to the effect of um, ghosts are real, um, ghosts do exist, arguments in favor of, of ghosts, you will not find stuff. All of the results that come up is, here's why people think they see ghosts even though they don't. Here's why ghosts are not real. You'll see everything on the other side. And if you just Google search something like that, it's easy for you to look at it and go, huh, nobody believes in ghosts. Huh, I guess ghosts aren't real. That's how that, a, a private company can shape your belief of the world. Think about some of the, of the, even just the social justice causes that you guys hear so much about. Go on Google and try to find the other side of it. You have a lot of trouble doing it because Google promotes the things that they want to promote. And then they'll say, well, it's the algorithm. And then when they've been asked to explain the algorithm, they've just said, no, it's proprietary. In other words, that's our private property. We're not required to, to, to share the algorithm, which, of course, they're not required to. But it's an incredible danger when you understand that Google, therefore, can shape exactly how you think about things. There are other search engines true, and they will give you different results, true, but when you want to search for something, what do we say? Oh, just go Google it. The word, the, the company Google has become synonymous with a web search. So that's terrifying to someone like me, because that means that you can change a whole generation of how people think just by letting them, just by only showing them what you want them to show. It doesn't matter how well sourced your, your argument is, Google will never pick it up, which means people will never see it. Um, I think a couple of you guys have seen that, right, over at my computer? Go search for something, anything. Just type in climate change. It doesn't matter what it is. And at the top of the screen, you're going to see something like 1.2 billion results. 
That's a lot of results, right? And you might think like, wow, a lot of people are writing about this. Scroll to the bottom, scroll to the bottom, scroll to the bottom, keep scrolling to the bottom. See how many pages you get through. And what you're going to find is that Google stops their presentation at about 250, I think it was, res search results. You said there's 1.2 billion. How come you're only showing me 250? And over half of those, I mean, sorry, I was asking for In that case, with climate change, about three quarters of the ones that you see are going to be things like ABC News, NBC News, Fox News, all of the mainstream corporate media outlets. You're going to see things from like NASA. You're, not going, you're going to see official government or legacy media, corporate media websites. That's all you're going to see. You're not going to see stuff from other people who have different points of view. And so it begs this question, why do you say there are 1.2 billion results, but you'll only show me 250? I mean, you can't go past that. And by the way, it doesn't matter what you search. It's not just climate change. It's any, just go on Google, type in a search. It works better from a, from a desktop because you can get through it faster. But it begs that question, like, huh, what are they withholding? What's in those other you know, 1.2 billion results that you won't show us? By the way, it doesn't mean that it's a conspiracy. Most of the 1.2 billion, they're probably re repeated sites. They're probably outdated things. I'm not saying that they all have the truth on there. All I'm saying is that Google now gets to decide for you what the truth is, because they only let you see one side. Others? Yeah. I think that with the three things on the board, secure, comfortable, and eternally true, mm -hmm. I, they both connect with the common people and the children. Why? These are also people that have almost blocked me. Shit, they heard me. Fuck. Oh, no. Stand in the cabin right now. In the cabin. That's right, in the cabin. That's right. The closet. Oh. I'm not coming out. <laughs> no, that's fine, let them come in here. Today's the day I got my black Tims. <laughs> Stopping out CIA agents left and right. Uh, Sorry. It's okay. Um, these are people with block visions. These people live in the country. Children don't choose by proxy, but they are mostly comfortable because they're still children. They're still developing. They're still... Go Shut the fuck up, dude. Oh my god. No one wants to hear your damn buzzing sounds. Sorry. It's okay. Um, this is on This might be it. <laughs> I've been waiting for this day my whole life. Finally. God damn it, Stanley. You're all in on it. You are all in the room when it happened. You're all, you're all complicit. It's in this helicopter. It's true, buddy. No, it's the search history. It was rare. Yeah, delete the search history. Go! Slide the phones. Delete the Sprout Ministries. Um, but with children, they're secure because they have parents to kind of be the safety net for themselves. They're comfortable because they get to live with their parents, they get to be sheltered, they get to be, you know, they get to be children. They're comfortable and eternally cheerful. The children that are common, um, are very happy. They're... They don't understand the point of misery or the, the existentialism that we live in today. But the common people also live through that stuff. They're secure. They've lived enough for life. They've, they work every day. They do what they can. But they don't think about it. They kind of just let it happen and they're happy about it. They live their life knowing that they're going to go into work and drink with their friends on the weekends. And they're happy about it. They're comfortable because they don't go outside their own scope. They, all they know is work, live, repeat, be happy, we're okay. Live with the media that we live with. But the people that outside of being cheerful, being happy, being comfortable, are also people that live in misery, people that live in depression, because they see everything else, m some more than others, but so much more than what the common people and what the children see. Some sort of truth, some sort of, um, some sort of different opinion. The common people can become 
outside of it. Someone uncommon, someone rare, like a thinker, someone that wants to find other things, other perspectives, other lifetimes. Those people are powerful. I'm not saying that if you have security, comfortability, and being eternally cheerful is weak, but is that really what we want to settle for? Or do we want to settle for something that's challenging? That's a real question, by the way. And our impulse, of course, is to say, I want something challenging. Okay? I love you guys. I, I gotta pay you guys. Remember what this means. Do you really want something challenging, though? I think in this class, 75% of people are failing. Why? Is it because the material is so difficult? No. It's because you just don't do the thing you're supposed to do. And so I ask that question again. Do you really want something challenging? So I ask that question again. Do we really want something challenging? Or are we kind of relying on the idea that we can get by with just getting by? And if we can just get by, well, go back to the class motto, right? Good enough? Good enough? Is it good enough for our lives? Now, the sad thing, and I do mean that in this sense, I don't know how many of you guys, if you had children, would want your children to just go through life good enough. I wonder how many of you guys, if you have friends and you really love them, you would tell them, hey, you know what, just get by, good enough. Or how many of you would really, really want more for your best friends? And how many of you guys would really, really want more for your, for your children? And yet we want so much more for other people than we want for ourselves. And I wonder if it's because you don't love yourselves the way that you would love your children or the way that you love your best friends. And it's hard to love ourselves. I get that. It's difficult. And of course, then there's, a, there's an extreme where there are people who love themselves just too much. And they don't think about anybody else. You, know, you want to be in the middle of that Aristotelian mean. You don't want to have you know, too much self-love because then you're a narcissist, you're arrogant. You don't want to have too little because then you're self-hating, you're deprecating. Of course, that leads to all kinds of ugly consequences. You want to be in the middle where you see that you are absolutely, you are absolutely valuable just in and of the fact that you're a human being and you exist. And that what, anything that you've done up to this point can never, can always be undone. If you something that you want to be different, then what you do is you can change yourself and be different. And hopefully that means that we also accept people who change and become different. When they, when they shed their skin for good, we should say. But you have to decide to do that, and that's a hard thing to do. Because of that, that goddamn thing that gets in the way every single time. Pride. Pride. Because for me to change, I have to accept that I'm not what I want to be, and I'm not what I could be. And also, I have to believe that I could become something better than what I am. And that I have a tool set to be able to do that. So not even just that I could, but that I have a skill set to do it at the moment. And that's hard for a lot of us to accept, because that's a lot of moving parts. It's easier for us to just kind of say, love me for who I am. Well, I can love you for what you are, but who you are is something different. I can love you for what you are. You're a human being who's unique, and I mean that, unique and special, just in and of the fact that you exist. But who you are, you do some stuff, man. I do some stuff, man. We all do some stuff, man. Some of it's worse than others. That's true. But just because someone's worse doesn't mean that so suddenly we're good. And by the way, just because someone's better doesn't mean that we're not good also. We have to take that, we have to take both of those together. It's not all negative, it's not all positive. It just, it is somewhere in the middle. And so, we can love people for what they are, wish, that, wish for them that they could be something better than who they are, and then work for ourselves to become something better than who we are. Possible. It's in your power. Because if it's in your power to do evil, in other, or to do bad, if, in other words, if you don't think very highly of yourself, whatever you're doing right now that makes you think that you're not good, if it's in your power to do those things, it's also therefore in your power to do better things. But you've got to decide what those things are. First off, for yourself, it shouldn't be me or anybody else coming to you and telling you this is how you should be. You already know how you should be. And 
and how you should be, you know, is going to vary among some of us, of course, of course. But recognize it is in your power to be that, to be the thing that you want to be. What do you want to be? Do you want to be somebody who's, do you want to be someone who, who's honest? In other words, to express the truth as best as you can possibly express it. Do you want to be someone who's a truth teller? Because that means that you have to find out what the truth is. And then to be honest and a truth teller, you have to be careful. Only talk about the things that you know about. Every, you know, definitively. The things that you don't know about, you can express ideas because that's how you develop your ideas. You talk about them. That's one of the things that makes things like cancel culture so damn dangerous. Because it makes it so hard for us to talk and express views. Because what if I say it wrong? I might offend somebody. If I, if I offend somebody, then you know, I could get docs, I could lose my job. It's better to just not say anything. That's what, that's what those losers want. Because, then if, you, because if, if you don't discuss ideas, they can implant ideas into your head. Or they can limit your search results, going back to Google. Now, as soon as you start asking questions about it, you, know, you start getting dogpiled on, especially online, now that means you never get an opportunity to develop the counter-argument against the one that's being shoved down your throat. People want you to stop talking. I've just found that the people who are against people sharing ideas, historically, are never on the right side. They're never the good guys. Remember that, that bastion of free speech that, that Mussolini created in Italy, where they could get together and share ideas? I don't. never happened. Remember that same thing that they created over in, in China right now, where you can get together and access the internet? and discover ideas from all over the world, and no, I don't know about that either. I don't know the same thing in Cuba. I don't know the same thing in Venezuela, or in Nazi Germany, or in Pol Pot's Cambodia, or in, or in, or in. There's something to be, t to be said, man, that the fascists always want to stop you from talking. Even if they call themselves anti-fascists, it's always the fascists who want to stop you from talking. And so it begs that question, what are you afraid of? What are you afraid of? We know what they're afraid of. We all know what they're afraid of. Now, if you have a... If, well, but, but can people present bad ideas? Yeah, and bad ideas are easy to destroy because they're bad ideas. Good ideas are dangerous. And by the way, it doesn't mean that you can all, it's always easy to, to destroy a lie. Lies are difficult to destroy. When someone lies about you, it's hard to, to, to prove them wrong. It is. Because I think it was Churchill who said that the, the uh, lies get halfway around the world before the truth even puts its pants on. Because lies, before you even realize you have to dispel a lie, millions of people have heard it. That's true. That's true. But I guess it also comes down to this question of, what is your faith in? Do you have a faith in humanity? And this, by the way, is really, really important. Do you have a faith in humanity? Because if you have a faith in humanity, then you have to have faith that even when people hear a bunch of lies, in the long run, the truth is always going to win. If you have a faith in humanity, you have to believe that eventually the truth is going to win. If you don't have a faith in humanity, then hear me, what in the fuck are you doing putting all of your power in, in humanity's hands then? Well, we have to stop people from talking. Why? Because people are stupid. So you put the power in the hands of the people who prove to you, who you say are stupid, and have proven to you that they want all the power. Well, let that sink in for a little bit. We complain about how corporations are evil and they're greedy, they just want your money, and yet we give Google the power to define how we think and what we can think about. <clears throat> well, which is it? Are they evil corporations or are they, or are they beneficent, uh, benevolent corporations? Which is it? Do you have faith in humanity? Yeah, uh, yeah, well then trust people to figure out the truth, let them talk. No, I don't have faith in humanity. And why are you giving a, a small set of people, the fascists, so much power? To control you and to control what you think. There's a contradiction there. You know? And that only, the whole idea that if you don't trust people, therefore we should shut down their speech, that only makes sense if you don't think about it. Like a lot of things in life, it only makes sense if you don't think about it. Everybody Olam is saying, you can ask yourself, who are the secure, the ones, the comfortable, the eternally cheerful? Who are these ultimate optimists? The people who can look at, at, at something like, let's say, Google, and say, oh, no, I, I totally trust them. I feel totally secure in their ability to, to, to sift through information. I'm totally comfortable with giving them that power. And isn't it great that we have that company who can do all that for us? Who really believes any of this? He tells us. 
dull pe is people with dull vision. People who are just either stupid or just don't want to get involved. And if you just don't want to get involved, fine. And I know it. I hear it all the time. I know you have teachers who are on you. You know, you, you don't want to get involved? No, I don't want to get involved. I don't want to be political. Come on, you have to. It's your world. Do it, do it, do it. Okay, try this. When they tell you to, 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 to get involved and to become little activists, tell them, here's what I believe. Tell them the exact opposite of what they're trying to indoctrinate you with. See how happy and open they are to hear that from you. Those teachers who are trying to, who are trying to create activists out of you, they're immoral, they're unethical, they shouldn't be here. It's disgusting. They're taking you guys and they know that you're a captive audience. You have to listen to what they're saying. And, then, and, they, and, and you know intuitively that your grade is based off of you agreeing with them. These are horrendous people who shouldn't be here. These are not educators. These are political activists. They're indoctrinators. And these are, by the way, the same people, guess what, who won't talk to me. Yeah. And why not? Well, you know, they're, they're dangerous. <laughs> as one teacher on campus has said, specifically about me, Scanlon is a troublemaker. Why? As, she, as this person was asked. Because he won't tell you what he thinks. <laughs> word for word, that's a quote from someone. <clears throat> Scanlon is a troublemaker. The student asks, why? Because he won't tell you what he thinks. Same teacher, by the way, who told the student, I don't need to talk to Scanlon to find out what he believes. A student, was, a student told this teacher, you should talk to Scanlon. By the way, I've only read one conversation with this student, and it, I'm sorry, with this teacher, and it was after all of this happened, and it had nothing to do with, what, with, what, with, what, uh, with, with those things. It had, had something completely different. I'd never even met this teacher before. And the student told this teacher, you should talk to Scanlon. You guys probably agree on a lot. The teacher said, I don't need to talk to Scanlon because nobody believes. <laughs> so. Or, by the way, the children. People, and by children, she, uh, he's not just saying young people. He's saying people who are kind of naive and innocent. So. Questions, comments, concerns, complaints, criticisms, critiques? All right, my turn to make you all little activists. Oh. <gasps> <gasps> <laughs>